Let's move on to main topic number two, shall we? And our second main topic today gets submitted to us by James Bond. Oh, good on you, James Bond. And James Bond writes, Hey, John, four MCU movies, uh, theatrical at any rate, Black Widow, Shang-Chi, Eternals, and Spider-Man 3, are releasing in 2021. Hopefully. How do you rank these movies based on your anticipation? All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in, man. And look, I'm not going to sit here and do a ranking of them, but it is an interesting collage of films, right? When you're looking at Shang-Chi, Eternals, Black Widow, Spider-Man, these are like four pretty different kinds of movies for Marvel. And it's good that you mentioned that Spider-Man 3 is an MCU movie, not a Marvel movie, because those are two different things. But we've got four very different films coming out. So which one do I think is going to be the best movie of the four MCU films coming out this year? Uh, I'm not going to give a rank or anything. I'll, I'll just tell you which one I think is going to be best and why right now I believe this one will be best. Let's look at a couple of them right now. First of all, let's look at Shang-Chi. I am so excited about Shang-Chi, especially when I found out that one of the stars of one of my absolute favorite shows on television right now, Kim's Convenience, uh, is going to star, uh, Simu Liu, I believe his name, is going to star, a uh, good Canadian kid, in Shang-Chi. Very excited about that. That's awesome. Also, the director of the film, see if I can bring this up here. The director of Shang-Chi is a guy by the name of uh, Destin Creighton. I hope I, I never know if I'm, mis if I'm pronouncing his name right, but he also directed a fabulous film that I saw not too long ago called Just, Murphy, uh, Just, uh, Just Mercy with Jamie Foxx and Michael B. Jordan. Terrific movie, beautifully directed. This is a director who knows how to tell a really good narrative using really good deep characters. Fantastic. So when you can get a director to bring those types of sensibilities to a movie, there's a lot to be excited about. Not to mention just the nature of the character carries a lot of promise for a lot of great action, a lot of great stuff. I am very, 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 very excited for Shang-Chi. Is it number one? Do I think that's the one that's going to be the best one yet? No, not necessarily. I'm not, pu I'm not putting my money on that one, but I am very excited about it. All right, then let's look at another one. Uh, the ones that's supposed to come out next which is, of course, Black Widow. Now, Black Widow, you guys know for me, uh, there are two characters in the MCU that I kind of feel the same way about, and that is Hawkeye and Black, and Black Widow. These are two characters that I love in the MCU when they're, in, when they're part of an ensemble, right? when they're in Avengers movies or Civil War movies, when Hawkeye and Black Widow are in the mix in the MCU movies, I think they're terrific characters. I love them. But I have never, and you guys may have heard me say this before, I have never really been all that interested in solo Hawkeye or Black Widow movies. I think they're terrific in the MCU, but I've never been interested in seeing them doing solo stuff. And, you know, maybe that's good. Maybe that's bad. I, I don't know. However you want to take it. But uh, that's just how I kind of feel about it. That being said, the trailers for Black Widow, while I don't think have blown the doors off, I think they've been pretty solid. I think they've been pretty solid. And you can't help, you know, but by at least be a little bit intrigued by the casting. I mean, the casting looks terrific. Scarlett Johansson obviously is Scarlett Johansson. So what, what more do you need to say about that? Florence Pugh, who we know is going to be in several of the other MCU shows. So clearly this Black Widow move, movie is going to be a launching point for uh, Yelena. This is obviously going to be a launching point for her. But then you've got like Oscar caliber Rachel Weisz in there. She's amazing. I love her. And then you got David Harbour in there. Now, David Harbour was just Hellboy, and that movie absolutely sucked. But I still like David Harbour. And I've really the thing I've liked about the Black Widow trailers the most have actually been um, uh, the David Harbour stuff as her dad. That, that, that's as the Russian Captain America, basically. That is the parts of the trailer I have loved the most. So while I have never been all that interested in a Black Widow movie, I will say I am I am looking forward to this. I and it's 
not to mention how long have we been waiting for it. So in general, it is one I'm looking forward to, but it is not the one that I'm guessing right now or anticipating will be the best one of the bunch. All right, let's look at another one then. Let's look at one that uh, was supposed, another one that's supposed to be in theaters already. And maybe the most impressive cast lineup out of any of the ones that are on this list right now. Let's talk about the Eternals. So Eternals is, to me, the next Guardians of the Galaxy, if you will. You know, Marvel and Kevin Feige rolled the dice in a huge way. They took a huge risk doing Guardians of the Galaxy. This weird ensemble of random characters that very few people outside of hardcore comic book readers had ever even heard of or know anything about. And this was in the midst when the MCU was doing things like, you know, Captain um, Captain America and Iron Man and Thor and, do, and Hulk and having these things. And then they came out and did Guardians of the Galaxy. Eternals, to me, represents that next big roll of the dice. Because again, like Guardians of the Galaxy, it's a bunch of characters that for the most part, the average mainstream movie audience has never heard of the Eternals, don't know any of the characters in the Eternals and any of that stuff. So it kind of represents, and it's on a different level, right? It's a very cosmic level, not really rooted in the types of issues we've seen in the MCU so far. So it kind of represents that next level of gamble for them. But they're bringing all the big guns to bear because when you look at the cast, of Eternals, you're talking major, major talent. Obviously, number one, right off the top, the headliner of the movie is Angelina Jolie. Who would have ever thought Angelina Jolie was going to do a comic book movie? Even after watching, guys, help me out in the live chat. What's the name of the movie she's in again where she bends the bullets? With She's in with James McAvoy. And, and by the way, uh, Chris Pratt is in that movie too. What's the name of the one where she wanted? Thank you, Omar and Richard and Nay. Wanted, Right. Where she, by the way, a lot of people forget Chris Pratt's in that movie too. A lot of people forget Chris Pratt's in that movie. He's hilarious in that movie. Very small role, but he's funny in it. Uh, by the way, I like Wanted. I know a lot of ma people make fun of, you know, the loom of fate. I don't care. I thought that was fun. I like Wanted. I always wanted, uh, no pun intended, I always wanted a Wanted sequel. I, I, they, they talked for a long time about getting a wanted sequel, by the way. Oh, and thank you to SMJ for throwing in a super chat badge in the live chat. Thank you so much for that, SMJ. Thanks for supporting the channel, dude. Um, I've always wanted a wanted sequel. Anyway, even after Wanted, you never really thought Angelina Jolie would do a comic book movie, but here she is. But listen to the rest. Gemma Chan. If you guys don't really know Gemma Chan, like you know she was in Captain Marvel and she's playing a totally different character now because in Camp Captain Marvel, she was all in makeup. You didn't recognize her anyway. Gemma Chan, I first became really, I took notice of Gemma Chan in Crazy Rich Asians. She is one of the male or female stupidly, ridiculously gorgeous creatures walking the face of the earth. Like male or female, I don't care. Like when she comes on screen in Crazy Rich Asians, like everything stops. Like this girl is just insanely beautiful. I really liked her in that movie as well. Of course, we saw her in Captain Marvel and that was cool and everything. But we go back. Look at this cast. So we got Angelina Jolie, Gemma Chan, Selma Hayek is in it. Hello. Then you've got your Game of Thrones reunion. You've got Richard Madden and Kit Harington. So, you know, you've got the Starks back together there. Uh, Richard Madden's been really hot lately, as a matter of fact. Kumail Nagiani, who I adore. I love Kumail Nagiani, even if his Stuber movie completely sucked. But whatever, I love him. Uh, so you got Kumail Nagiani in there. Uh, Brian Henry, who I adore. I've, I just, I never was never really familiar with him before Atlanta. Really started to like him in Atlanta. I mean, this is a killer cast. An absolutely killer cast on this whole cosmic level. And uh, Armando sends in a super chat badge as well in the live chat. Thank you, Armando. Um, just an absolutely ridiculously killer cast, top to bottom, uh, galactic scale stuff. There's whispers about maybe even a young Thanos being in it because this is a story, Kevin Feige says, is going to span thousands of years. It's going to span thousands of years, this one movie. So... And for those who know the comics, there is a connection with Thanos there. So there, there's some whispers we might even see a younger version of Thanos at some point. Whether they do or don't, there's a lot of reasons to be excited about it. 
I know Eternals is Robert Meyer Burnett's like most anticipated movie when it comes to all the comic book movies. He's most looking forward to this one. Um, but it is still not the one that I'm guessing or predicting will be the best one out of the MCU bunch coming in 2021. Although I am very much looking forward to it. So that only leaves us with one more which makes it kind of obvious which movie I am most looking forward to and the one that I think will be the best. And right now that is Spider-Man three. Now the main reason, and this isn't a very exciting reason, it's just a very basic common sense reason. The main reason I think right now that I have, I'd be willing to put down two bucks on betting that Spider-Man three will be the best of those movies is simply this. We know what we're getting with it. We've already had two Spider-Man movie, movies directed by the same guy, by Watts, who's going to be directing the Fantastic Four movie, by the way. Spider-Man Homecoming was fantastic. I loved it. Spider-Man Far From Home was not quite as good, but still very, very enjoyable. Very enjoyable. We've got the wonky bonkersness of having Doc Ock back, uh, with Molina coming back, we got Jamie Foxx coming back as Electro. There are still rumors. We'll still call them rumors at this point. There are still rumors, although, I mean, it's looking fairly certain that we are going to see uh, McGuire and uh, uh, Toby McGuire and Andrew Garfield back as well. We know that it's going to be tied into WandaVision and the upcoming Doctor Strange movie, all that guys. So there's a lot of things, unlike Shang-Chi, which we don't right now have a real, I mean, we don't have any sample size yet. This is the first Shang-Chi movie. So we're going to see what we get. A lot of excitement. Sure. Black Widow. And, you know, I, I've got my apprehensions about, about Black Widow, but the trailers have looked good. Eternals, again, it's an unknown quantity. It's an unknown, it's an unknown um, uh, element right now. No pun intended. We don't know what we're getting with it yet. But, with Spider-Man 3, we know the director, we've seen this cast, they have made Spider-Man movies before, and we know their quality. So right now, if I had to put down two bucks to make my guess as to which will be the best movie out of this group, right now, the one thing I, I have the biggest sample size of and I feel most comfortable with is Spider-Man 3. Now, that doesn't mean Shang-Chi or Eternals or even Black Widow can't come out and surprise us and blow, the, and, you know, blow Spider-Man 3 out of the water. But right now... That's where I'm at. But it is an exciting year. It is an exciting year. If we do indeed get to this light at the end of the tunnel, we got a lot of good stuff coming up. And then there's all the Disney Plus stuff on top of that. Let's see what DC and the folks at Warner Brothers are able to roll out. A lot of people very excited about the Justice League miniseries coming to HBO, the Snyder Cut. A lot of people excited about that. I mean, this could be a great year. But then again, we thought that at the beginning of 2020, we saw how that turned out. But hope's alive for now let's hope for the best let's believe in the best guys the question is out of the mcu offerings that we're getting in 2021 apparently which one do you think will be the best film jump down into the comment section below and let me know your thoughts okay guys